Okay, wonderful. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Benyon, and I use she, her pronouns. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Psychology and Child Development at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And uh, this is my second year as part of Square. So pretty similar to Tara and Sacramento State, although also quite different. And I'll point out some of those differences. Last year for Square, we had focused on the course construction and whether elements that faculty have chosen to include in their courses differed depending on whether they had taken Q1 course or not. Um, and that was a, a really interesting research question that I want to delve more into in the future now that we have more and more people who have done that Q1 training. In general, I'd say Cal Poly is a little bit different from uh, many of the schools in the CSU system because I think we have many fewer online courses and I think we're still working towards really showing um, just the value of online teaching. I think there are a lot of skeptics um, thinking, you know, really questioning the efficacy. Um, and we're also in very deep in semester conversion. So um, here with what we're doing, we're going to be moving on to semesters in fall 2026. But one thing we thought could be valuable to do for the project this year was to look at student perceptions of online teaching so that we could hopefully glean a little bit more into either areas for future training or course elements that faculty should be including more of and things like that. And so overall, we launched a student survey about online versus face-to-face -face teaching. And then we had some quantitative, um, but largely qualitative questions so that we could gather takeaways. Um, one limitation that I'll, I'll say right off the bat, and I think this is something that, that Tara did really well, is so we didn't actually, and I have the ability to analyze for this um, later on because I did collect information about what classes students were referring to, and we also have the data of whether faculty had taken the Q1 course, but um, what I'll be presenting today just looks at 105 participants, um, most of whom are in their third and fourth years at Cal Poly and um, are from my department. So um, again, I have the data about the classes that they were talking about specifically, but um, I do think one limitation will be the generalizability of it, and that's something that I would like to address in future studies. Um, but as far as some of our results, so looking at benefits versus challenges of online versus face-to-face -face learning, students really spoke about the flexibility, the ability to being able to pause video lectures, speed them up or slow them down. Um, they felt like projects became more creative on average. I have some examples of this later on. Um, and they did speak to it being a more accessible way of learning regarding captioning, meeting individualized learning needs, um, and actually not needing to navigate campus. I know we had a few students with disabilities really speak to that um, just as a way of leveling the playing field and being able to participate really comfortably. With challenges, we saw um, students mentioning a challenge being connecting with peers and faculty, some expectations from faculty of being connected or online all the time, motivation of um, just being able to, to do the work, I think particularly in the asynchronous classes. And then one idea that I was extremely intrigued by, which I hope to investigate further, is this idea um, a student had quoted the pressure of permanence um, where they were saying that it was um, assignments were taking longer because when they were writing in discussion boards they knew that those would be permanent students would you know, see them, potentially judge them. Whereas if it's a comment in class that isn't recorded or isn't written down, then there was less pressure. So I think students had reported that contributing to this sense of having more work um, when perhaps, you know, it may not have been actually more work. Um, so that was an interesting idea. As far as benefits, I'll just put all of these and I, I won't read all of them. Um, but we saw flexibility being a huge one. Um, I mentioned a lot of these already. Um, 
here are some examples of the creative projects um, and being creative, more creative and thoughtful when it comes to engaging and connecting with course content as opposed to perhaps being in class and um, being assessed with a standard exam. Um, and they also appreciated that um, fewer, or sorry, shorter lectures, um, perhaps more shorter lectures, apologies for that, um, versus you know a, a long two hour class. Um, looking at challenges, connections was the place where students saw um, really the biggest area that faculty could work on. Um, and I think just being more intentional about having students engage as part of their class and assignments, that could be a huge part. Anxiety from discussions, um, motivation or laziness. I think we had many students speak to how it was challenging to be motivated when every week it was the exact same set of assignments. So like posting once and replying to two peers. So um, looking for faculty to mix that up. Um, and I'll just put all of these up here. Um, and we did see some students speak to, you know, there being a lack of accountability, particularly if the exams weren't open book or open note. Um, we also asked about specific course elements. So pretty similar to Tara's presentations, we saw that consistency was key. I think in these data, there was a little bit of a tension where, um, you know, students wanted consistent deadlines, like on specific days of the week, perhaps, so they could memorize, you know, this is always due on Sundays, or this is always due on Wednesdays, but they didn't like seeing the same assignments, like the post once, reply twice. Um, but they really appreciated that organization. Um, we're seeing, yeah, certainly students didn't like the closed book exams. Maybe the cheating has um, a little bit to do with that. But um, here are just some of the, the other elements that weren't particularly surprising. They liked the shorter recorded lectures, particularly in the asynchronous classes. Um, this looked at how beneficial interaction with other students was via different forums. So um, surprisingly, our students, you know, they didn't love the Flipgrid videos for those who had, um, or or maybe, maybe they liked them, but they didn't feel that the interaction was perhaps as like deep or meaningful. Um, group projects was listed as a big challenge, particularly for asynchronous courses. Um, and here, you know, we're kind of seeing mixed responses on discussion forums or, or Zoom meetings. Um, there's not a whole lot of time to, to talk about any of these, and I'm happy to answer questions. And then I know I'm running out of time, but um, I just have a couple of quick pros and cons for, um, for different course elements. So students really wanted um, optional Zoom sessions for asynchronous classes to be able to engage with the professors in real time and preferred Zoom over the asynchronous discussion forums. Um, and I think at the same time, we saw a little bit of Zoom fatigue for the students who happened to be enrolled in a lot of synchronous Zoom classes. Um, discussions, we saw that there was a preference for being able to form community by having small groups that you work with regularly versus the whole class. And then ideally to be having meetings with them over Zoom so that you have a sense of community in the class. Um, and this idea of the pressure of permanence, you know, having it, students reporting it taking much longer to figure out what to say or apply in a discussion because the students know that it's there permanently. And they also brought that up um, in regards to Flipgrid or audio. So that's a really interesting um, question and, and something I hadn't thought about much before this. Um, group projects seem to be especially difficult in the online classes, uh, particularly with scheduling. Um, but overall, I'll just put up our main takeaways here. Um, I think 
overall, what we're seeing is, you know, a lot of really practical tips for faculty. I look forward to analyzing the data based on if the students were answering the survey, you know, responding to a class for which a student has taken the, the Q1 training, or if a faculty member has taken the Q1 training. Um, and ultimately, I hope that we can move at Cal Poly toward you know, understanding the many benefits of online teaching and allowing students more flexibility, at least when there are multiple sections of a class offered in a given year to offer students the option to take it in one modality or the other so that they can choose what works best for them and how they prefer to learn. Um, all right, so thank you very much.